could be better than one cherry ripe? Two cherry ripes, baby. That. Nah, 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 Shad, sorry, gotta interrupt you here. You're wrong. There's something better than two cherry ripes. No, no, no. What could be better than two cherry ripes, Oz? Three cherry ripes. Greetings, I'm Shad. And the gag in the cold open, the logic doesn't really translate, but it also depends on context, because I wholly believe that, uh, you know, that logic kind of applies to swords. What's better than one sword? Two swords, two, three. I mean, you can never have too many swords that are just, that are properly well-made swords, okay? The idea that uh, we could add another blade to a, like, a regular sword, that would improve it. No, it would not, okay? Not every kind of fun idea has logical or functional merits to it. There's a reason why tri-bladed swords did not exist. Now, in this video, we are looking at the tri-bladed sword as seen from the movie Sword and Sorceress, which is uh, a... Uh, Sword and sorcery, you know, garbage flick, like popcorn flick. So I looked it up, and it was actually, it was a successful movie of the day, and I've only seen clips of it, and the thing that threw me out was like, that stupidly ridiculous sword. It's just a meme, right? Yet, I think people liked it, and it was one of those ones trying to capture the Conan the Barbarian success, and so a whole lot of crappy, like really poorly made sword sorcery movies were made trying to recapture the Conan, Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan movie successes. And after doing some research, a lot of them really are trashy and are not appropriate for younger audiences by any means, Sword and Sorcerer being one of them as well. But the idea, the logic of the tri-bladed sword doesn't only appear in the Sword and the Sorceress. To a lesser extent, double-bladed swords, and so when I say double blade, it's not like a blade on one end and a blade coming, no, 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 it's like a blade parallel to each other, pointing in the same direction. They appear in pop culture already. Final Fantasy Advent Children, is it Kadash, I think his name is, he's got a double-bladed katana, and in actual fact, there's a guy in the Roni Kenshin series, one of my favorite anime series of all time, has a double-bladed sword as well. I forget his name, I just remember the name that Sonosuke calls him, Broomhead. Anyway, so they appear, and there's even a logic that is tried to be ascribed to them, and the logic that, say, is in Roni Kenshin is that two cuts parallel to each other are really hard to patch up and heal, and so it's more damage. But there are some real fundamental functional logical problems with the idea of having two blades, one on the other, on a sword, which in my opinion, uh, explains very much why they didn't exist historically. And if they did, it would have been a novelty, someone just doing something dumb. And uh, they weren't widespread, because if something was actually legitimately functional in warfare, like it was a properly good weapon, there was a dominant, very much in the um, European medieval history, okay, there was an arms race in medieval Europe for just finding the most effective weapons. Why do you think gunpowder was adopted and then perfected so well in medieval Europe, where other places in the world had it, and they didn't refine the ability to employ it in a, you know, weapon nearly as effectively? So when it comes to the medieval period, all right, yeah, they were serious about finding weapons that worked good. I'll account for a lot of the wars that happened back then. And uh, one thing that we don't find is uh, widespread, I have never even seen a historical example of a double-bladed sword in this sense, and if there was, like I said, it would be a novelty, and so we can certainly say it wasn't a widespread thing. So I'm going to explain why the tri-bladed sword is really, really dumb, but before we get there, I want to uh, just encourage people who are thinking of uh, interesting kind of different weapons, because it's fun to add, give your hero a unique different weapon, as opposed to other weapons, makes them stand out and stuff like that. And so if you're doing that, I would encourage you to try and think more logically, okay? Would this actually be functional? Would it be logical? Is there historical precedent for it? Because we have found fantasy weapons that actually have some level of functionality to them, like um, the Crucible Sword from Doom series. Uh, Mjolnir, actually has some level of logic to it as well. So it can be done, just, just think about it a bit more. And if you are gonna be thinking about this more, if you're creating your own fantasy world, well, you're probably gonna find Campfire Blaze very, very useful, which is the sponsor of this video. 
Why would you find it useful? Well, let me ask you a question. If you've ever done any level of world building, this could be for a book you're writing, if it's a world building for a role playing game, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons, if you're creating something for a, a game development or anything. If you're doing this with any level of detail, you will have experienced the fact that your world building document gets really large and really difficult to manage. And you end up looking at what was that thing that I wrote about this culture in this place? And you know, I, I'm scrolling through, I can't find it. Campfire Blaze is a uh, program that's made specifically to solve that, where it's there for writing and world building, and it organizes everything for you, where you can put, ah, this is the culture I want, this is the kingdom, the oh, character backstories, it's got them as well, their biographies, their personalities and stuff, and then when you need to look up something, bang, you find it really easily. Ah, what about maps? Well, it has interactive maps, and you can actually add important information to the locations on the map as well. What about timelines? And timelines, by the way, is something that can be annoying to manage, because it's like, hang on, did this happen so many days ago? Go, what about is something's happening over somewhere else and stuff? Well, you can do timelines with Campfire Blaze as well. And yes, it has an integrated word processor, so you can write your whole story in Campfire Blaze on top of it. And then on top of all these great features, it has one of the most flexible payment structures that you'll find with any other piece of software. Highly recommend Campfire Blaze. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to this uh, dumpster fire of a weapon. The tri-bladed sword. Why is it a dumpster fire? Let me explain. Well, there's a logic that I've actually already brought up in this video. It's when I have rev reviewed Wolverine's Claws. Right here, see Wolverine's Claws? This is a, this is essentially a tri-bladed weapon, okay? These are, are kind of cool, aren't they? Mm. And in that video, I explain something that I'll also explain here, because this applies to uh, the double, a double-bladed kind of weapon like this as well. And it's a uh, logical reality of physics, in, in uh, essentially force distribution, all right? If I put so much energy behind a strike, okay, that amount of force, when I hit, is then evenly distributed, if it's, a, if it's an even hit, right, is evenly distributed to each core, which technically lessens the penetrative power or cutting capacity by a third. And so if we reduce that, it would be reduced by a half, but far better, far better than, you know, having three claws, right? It's having one blade where all that force and energy can be concentrated into a single cut, and therefore that cut has far greater capacity to actually do more damage, all right? And even perhaps chop a whole limb off of. And so when you amplify the concepts to something like a sword, yeah, all the logic we just talked about applies even more so. If I put two blades parallel one to each other and struck with it and I actually attacked with it, the cutting power is then halved between each blade and it won't go as deep. But you might say, but there's two cuts. Someone is not going to die from two surface level superficial cuts than opposed to one, all right? Uh, especially if it doesn't reach any vital organs, cutting an artery and stuff like that. And so for more lethal cuts, you need more devastating deeper cuts. That's the focus, all right? And if you're halving your power by having two blades, well then you have a much higher chance of just doing a superficial surface cuts and two of them is nowhere near a better outcome than a single lethal cut, all right? You would always take the preference of a single lethal cut in terms of a weapon, combat effective and stuff, than two superficial surface cuts, or, so, or even if they're not wholly superficial, they're still deep. If they're survivable, two survivable cuts is far worse an outcome than one lethal cut. And so you have a much higher chance of the single lethal cut with a single blade, and that's why single blades are so much better. And doubling up, you know, like the, uh, you know, the one from Final Fantasy Advent Children, Roni Kenshin, and, <laughs> and, a, and a triple bladed sword is stupid beyond belief, like, it's really dumb. And because not only uh, are you reducing the lethality of the weapon, you're increasing the weight by adding another blade on it. It's not essentially doubling the weight because you have, you know, the whole hilt here that's not being doubled. And so you'd be increasing it by maybe 70%, depending on how heavy the blade is as opposed to the handle. But with this triple bladed sword, you're most definitely doubling the weight from a regular sword. <laughs> So, so already this is done, but look, I, I cannot leave out the most important, you know, feature of the tri-bladed sword from the Sword and the Sorceress. And it's not really the fact that the three blades are there to increase cutting capacity or anything. No, 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 no. The additional blades on either sides can, can shoot.
from the sword. They print the, you point it and it literally shoots. <laughs> Just hilarious now. So, couple of things. It, it would have some level of effect. I mean, a projectile, you know, blade, even if it's the size of a sword, it's, it's dangerous. You'd be able to use it to some level. It's dumb. And I mean, you'd be much better off like having a throwing dagger you could throw in your other hand, stuff like that. And it must work through magic because what there's no mechanism that could effectively launch a blade of that size with that, you know, power and the length that is shown in the movie uh, in real life. Not going to happen unless with like really modern technology, right? But even if we went with the magic of it, okay, uh, it's dumb because one, you're reducing the lethality of the sword itself, and two, you can achieve the same level of effect with a thrown backup weapon in your offhand, and then you have a more functional sword. Uh, is it the surprise factor? It's like, ah, I've got a three-bladed sword. It's like someone's like, it's, it's, it's three, and while they're thinking, why well, was it three blades? Blah, one shoots off, and oh, I wasn't expecting, and they're dead. But maybe you could you just like, ah, I, I have a regular sword and then quick, ah, thrown dagger or something like that. Granted, like the lethality of thrown daggers is uh, being hammed up and uh, inflated in pop culture far more so than in real life. Thrown daggers, unless you can get a golden hit in an eye or the neck where it cuts into an artery or something like that, rarely ever gonna actually kill someone. If they just like do this, okay, and block the vital things and then he gets hit here, uh, rarely will they penetrate deep enough to hit a vital organ when it's thrown. They can, I'm not saying it's impossible, but you're relying on that to be able to do it every single time it lands, uh, especially if they even have small layers of protect, like just basic clothing or even thick clothing. A thrown dagger is going to have a lot of trouble getting through that. Uh, um, it's, it's actually hard to emphasize enough how much more lethal a, an arrow is from a war bow compared to a thrown dagger. Think, and throwing daggers are cool, it's like you throw them, they spin and everything, their range sucks, their lethality is so much less, to the point where I, I and you know, this is following on from a better thrown weapon, the throwing stick, right? now that is a cool weapon, has more, because better range and all these things, uh, I, I don't really like throwing daggers, I mean, they're cool, but in terms of a functional, effective weapon, they have far too many detriments and drawbacks. Maybe I'll have to do a dedicated video because everyone thinks I'm always ragging on, you know, Asian weapons and never critical of medieval European weapons when I've been very blunt and open about criticizing the flail, the double-headed, double-bladed axe I've criticized as well. And here, look, here's another one, throwing daggers, okay? Uh, so I feel I'm quite consistent with calling out weapons that are less effective uh, regardless of culture, and depending on how ineffective they are, depends on how vicious my criticisms are, because when we find a really bad one, like the nunchucks, yeah, I will call them out as garbage. Now, throwing daggers are not wholly garbage, okay? Uh, and I'll talk, probably talk about that in a dedicated video, because they're still a dagger, that's good, but the throwing capacity, eh. Now, in regards to the tri-bladed sword, the argument is these projectile simple sword blades, that's the two on either end, yeah, they are very much more lethal than a thrown dagger, I will grant it, but the drawbacks that it creates in the sword itself, not not worth it, not worth it at all. Like, this is why, overall, this is a profoundly dumb weapon. At least, uh, like, there is some measure of utility to the dumbness, like, like, the advantage you could get out of it does not outweigh the stupidity and drawbacks that you would have as a weapon. It would be so heavy and unwieldy, the cuts would be... like It's hard enough to cut through bone, chopping off like a limb, okay? You would have to triple that force to do it with a sword like this. We'll ring... He can bring out one claw, then all three, if he wants. That should be his whole thing. Like my video when I review Wolverine's claws, just this, uh, and a longer one, even just don't. That would be such a more effective weapon. And even if he can't change his type of claws, he can just bring out the one claw, as we saw him give the fingered <laughs> um, Cyclops, right? That would be so much, Wolverine, just use one claw. That's all you need to do, okay? And with this sword, yeah, just shoot off the other one, like, I don't know, backup blades, if one, ah! Backup blades, that utility, okay? Where you use the tri-bladed sword as just a regular, you know, single sword, and when it might break or it gets too blunt, you can detach one blade and attach another one. You know, Attack on Titan style. But there we go. This has been my thoughts and review of the tri-bladed sword from the Sword and the Sorceress, and it is, uh, top tier stupid. Thank you for watching, and of course I hope to see you in the next video, so until then, farewell.